Okay, so when we look at this problem, it tells me to solve 5.44 raised to the x equals 2.3. So nowadays, y'all have these nice calculators where you can change the base of the logarithm to be whatever you want it to be. So the way that you would solve this is by rewriting this into logarithmic form, right? And so we would do log base 5.44 of 2.3 equals x, and your calculator will actually do this for you. Okay, but back in my day, back in the 2010s, our calculators couldn't change the base to whatever we wanted. We only had two bases that were possible. We had a log base E and a, which is the natural log and the log base 10. So what the way we used to solve these and the way they still teach us to do it is to do what's called a change of base formula. So this is important because we can use these skills in different logarithmic problems, but this is what a change of base formula is. It says well, we don't have a nice base that we want to rewrite both sides of, so what we can do is we can take a log base, whatever we want, of both sides. And as long as we do it to both sides, it stays balanced. Just like when we solve equations, we do it to one side and the other. We can multiply both sides. We can add to both sides. What we do here is we take a log base, whatever, and it's balanced as long as we do it to both sides. So what people normally do is they take a natural log of both sides because it's one less letter. Okay, but again, as long as I do it to both sides, it keeps it balanced. So now on the left side, I have a natural log of 5.44 raised to the x. So inside the argument, I have a power. I can rewrite the power as multiplication out front. So we would rewrite that to be x times natural log of 5.44 equals the natural log of 2.3. And then we would solve, get x by itself. X is being multiplied by the natural log of 5.44. So we would divide by the natural log of 5.44 on both sides. And so that would tell me X equals the natural log of 2.3 divided by the natural log of 5.44. Again, this is called the change of base formula. Because we change the base to be a base E now by taking a natural log of both sides. And you'll notice if you plug both of those answers in, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get the exact same thing as if you plug this into your calculator. So it's a new tool we have to help us solve equations. So if I work 71, Again, if I wanted to know what log base 4 of 9 is, you could plug that straight into your calculator. But we're practicing the change of base formula. So what we would do is we would say we don't know what log base 4 of 9 is, so we set it equal to x because that's what we're looking for. Now to balance our equation, We could say 4 raised to the x equals 9. This seems like a really bad example to use this on. I would take a natural log of both sides. That would give me x times the natural log of 4 equals the natural log of 9. And now then x is being multiplied by the natural log of 4, so I would divide the natural log of 4 on both sides. That tells me x equals the natural log of 9 over the natural log of 4. If it told me to give an exact answer, that would be the exact answer. But we read our directions, it tells me to round to four decimal places. So if I put that in my calculator, it would be 1.5850 rounded to four decimal places. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do 73. So I have log base 9.1 of 2.3. So 
So again, I'm trying to find what that value is. So I would set it equal to X because that's what I'm looking for. Now then rewrite this into exponential form. So 9.1 raised to the X equals 2.3. Then we would take a natural log of both sides. On the left, I can bring the X out front as being multiplied. So that would give me X natural log of 9.1 equals the natural log of 2.3 and then divide by the natural log of 9.1 that tells me x equals and again this would be the exact answer natural log of 2.3 divided by the natural log of 9.1 which if I make that into a decimal I get 0 0.3772 rounded to four decimal places Any questions there on change of base formula? Okay. Okay, so working 63, it tells me to find the approximate rational solution to each equation, rounding my answer to four decimal places. So this is currently in exponential form. So we could go through the process of rewriting this into logarithmic form log base 2 of 9 equals x. And for this, that would not be that difficult. But we have a new way we can solve these now. If I want to get the x out of the exponent, I can just take a log of both sides. So I would take a natural log of both sides using that change of base formula. Bring the x out front, so that becomes x natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 9. And then x is being multiplied by the natural log of 2, so we divide by the natural log of 2. Which tells me x equals natural log of 9 over natural log of 2 as an exact answer. And then if it asks for the decimal, four decimal places, we put that in our calculators and get 3.16992501. Questions there. Come to 68. So again, I've got 1.09 all raised to the X equals 3. I would take a natural log of both sides. Bring that X out front. So that's X natural log of 1.09 equals the natural log of 3. Divide by the natural log of 1.09. And then this would be my exact answer. If I had to round that to four decimal places, I would get 12.7482267. So again, to four decimal places, that would be my answer. Okay, so if I was working 79, I've got 1.0001 raised to the 365T, and I'll pull that down just a second, equals 3.5. Now again, my variable is stuck in an exponent, so I would take a logarithm of both sides. Bring the 365t out front. So that leaves me with 365t natural log of 1.0001 .001 equals the natural log of 3.5. Now I want to get t by itself. t is being multiplied by 365 and the natural log of 1.0001. .001. So I would divide by both of those things. So I'm dividing by 3. 65 times the natural log of 1.0001. .001. So those cancel. And I would need to do the same thing on the other side. So that would give me the natural log of 3.5 over 365 natural log of 1.0001. .001. And again, if it asks for an exact answer, that would be it. These tell me to round to four decimal places. So when I put that in my calculator, I find T equals 0 
four, three, so it would round to zero, zero, three, four. Questions there? Oh, yeah, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. My fault. It should be... That was just divided by 365. Should get T equals 34.3239, which would round up to 40. 34.3239. Oh, is that what you're getting? My fault. Okay, so I'm looking 77, 78, 80. They're all very similar. 81 is a little bit more difficult. So let's do 83. 83's got the number in front as well as Okay, so I've got 2 times 1 plus R over 12 raised to the 360th power equals 8.4. So I've got an R stuck in parentheses now. It's not actually in the power. So what I want to do is isolate that entire power. So this is the power. It's being multiplied by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2 first. That would give me 1 plus R over 12 raised to the 360th equals 4.1. No. Yes. You don't know how to divide. Okay, so here's the different part. When the variable is stuck in the exponent, that's when we want to take logarithms because that helps get the exponent down on the same level. But because the, exp because the variable is just inside parentheses, then I want to go through my process of undoing everything outside the parentheses. So right now, the variable is being raised to the 360th power. So how do we undo that? If something was raised to the second power, how do we undo that? Take a square root. So if it's raised to the 360th power, we're going to take a 360th root. And the way we would write that is just 1 over 360 as our exponent. We know square root is just raising it to the 1 half. So same idea here. We're going to raise both sides to the 1 over 360th power which means we're taking a 360th root. And on the left, those cancel. And I'm left with 1 plus r over 12 equals, and then I've got 4.2 raised to the 1 over 360th. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. I could go ahead and get a decimal answer, but it's going to be probably long and ugly. So I will multiply that at the very end. Now we want to isolate R. So first R is being added by 1. So we would move the 1 over. It becomes negative. So I've got R over 12 equals 4.2 raised to the 1 over 360th minus 1. And then R is being divided by 12. So I'm going to multiply by 12 on both sides. And so now the R is isolated, our variable is isolated, and this is our answer. So we're going to put that in our calculator. Make sure you put it in carefully. When we do, we're going to four decimal places. That should be 0 0.04793. So it would stay as 0 0.0479. Then let's also do 85 because those... Four are a little different. They're easy as well, though. So I've got log base x 
of 33.4 equals 5. So now my variable is in the base. So what we want to do is just rewrite this into exponential form. So that would be x raised to the fifth equals 33.4. Now to undo raising something to the fifth power, we're going to take a fifth root. So again, I can just think about raising it to the one-fifth power. It does the same thing. So the fifth root and fifth power cancel. And then I've got 33.4 raised to the one-fifth. And if I do that, I should get 2.0172. And that would be my answer there, rounding to four decimal places. We're looking at 2500 is invested at 6% daily interest. How long would it take for the investment to double? So we've had problems similar to this. Now this is not compounded continuously. It's compounded daily. So I cannot use the PE to the RT formula. I'm going to have to use the other one. So the amount that I have in the bank is equal to the principal times 1 plus the rate over number of times compounded raised to the number of times compounded times time. Okay, so if I'm wanting $2,500 to double, then in the end I want it to be $5,000. So I know the amount in the end is going to be 5000 equals the principal amount is 2500 times 1 plus... The rate is 6%, so that's 0 0.06, over number of times compounded in a year. Well, because it's daily, that would be 365. Raised to the number of times compounded, still 365. And then T is what we're looking for, the amount of time it takes. So now I have a variable stuck in an exponent. So I want to isolate that power, and then I'm going to use my logarithms to get it out of the exponent. So I would divide by 2,500 on both sides first. That's going to give me 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.06 over 365, raised to the 365t. See, right here, when we worked this problem yesterday... We had to make this our base, if you'll remember. It was something ugly, terrible to put in the base of a log. Well, now, knowing what we know, we can just take a natural log of both sides and then pull the 365t out front as being multiplied. So now I have the natural log of 2 equals 365t natural log of, and then you still got this ugly number, but... It's a little bit easier to type it in there than it is in the base. At least writing it out, it doesn't look as bad. Now, T is being multiplied by 365 and that natural log. So I'm going to divide both sides by 365 natural log of 1 plus 0 0.06 over 365. 365's cancel, natural logs cancel. That leaves me with a T equals... And then I've got to divide the other side by that. I don't really have room on here. But that's going to give me the natural log of 2 over 365 natural log 1 point, I'm sorry, 1 plus 0 0.06 over 365. Then when I type that in my calculator, I should get the time is equal to 11.55 years. And so what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to years and days. So I've got 11 total years 
And so then I've got this 0.55 that's left over. So I want to multiply that 0.55 by 365 because that's basically half of a year, right? 0.55 years. So to find exactly how many days that is, we would do 0.55 times 365. And when we do that, we get 201.99, which is basically 202 days. So again, a little over half a year. That's what we expected. It would be 11 years, 202 days. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to put all of our rules together to solve logarithms. Now, again, just remember our rules. Our base has to be positive, and the argument has to be positive, and it can't be 1. So when we're solving for these x's, we have to make sure it will not make the argument negative because there's sometimes we can get an answer that does not work when we plug it back in. So on this one, I'm told to solve, so I want to get x by itself. The x is stuck in the argument. So I would rewrite this from logarithmic to exponential. So there is no base, so it's an understood base of 10. So 10 to the third equals 2x plus 1. So 10 to the third is 1,000. Then we would subtract by 1 and then divide by 2. So it tells me x is 999 over 2. Which again, if I plug that back in, it's not going to make this negative. So it works as an answer. Okay, the next one has a base of 3. And again, my variable is stuck in the argument. So I'm going to rewrite this to exponential form. 3 to the third equals x minus 6. So 3 to the third is 27 equals x minus 6. Adding 6, I get x equals 33. Then again, plug that number in. Make sure it does not break this. 33 minus 6 is 27, so it works as a solution. Okay, so now our argument is a trinomial x squared minus 5x plus 16. So we're going to have an understood base of 10. So this is going to be 10 to the first equals x squared minus 5x plus 16. Well, 10 to the first is just 10, and then I'm going to move the 10 over so I can get it equal to 0. So I've got 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. So now I have a trinomial equal to zero, so you can factor, you can use the quadratic formula. This one factors nicely, so I'm going to factor it. That's going to factor to be x minus two times x minus three equals zero. So that would give me x equals two and x equals three are my solutions. Now I have to make sure both of them work. So I'm gonna start by plugging in two. Two squared is four. 5 times 2 is 10, so I've got 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 16 is positive 10, so 2 works. It gives me no problems. Now I plug in 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 15 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 16 is positive 10, so it also works. So both of those would be solutions. No, we cannot factor that to be 6 and 1 because I need them to multiply to be positive 6. So if you did 6 and 1, you'd have to alternate the signs to get a negative 5. And then if I multiplied those, it would give me a negative 6 instead of a positive 6. And remember, if you're unsure on factoring, you can always do the A times C, rewrite the B term. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so we're going to work to the natural log of 2x squared minus 3x minus 7 equals 0. It should be a minus. So, 
Mm-hmm. When I fast-forward the video, the guy's marked out the plus sign and put a minus in. So this is going to be e raised to the zero power equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 7. I mean, you don't have to erase it all. All it's going to be is one thing's changed. Yes, that's what will happen in the end. So this is going to be 1 equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 7. Right here is where it will start changing. Move that over. It becomes negative, so I'm going to get negative 8. 2x squared minus 3x minus 8. So now I'm going to see if I can factor it. So I'm going to do a times c. 2 times 8 is 16. What multiplies to be 16? 1 and 16, 2 and 8, or 4 and 4. Do any of those combine to give me 3? They still do not. So I'm going to now use the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Okay, so that's going to give 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 64 over 4. That's going to be 73. So 3 plus or minus the square root of 73 over 4. Nine won't work. Twenty-five won't work. Four. Is that what y'all get in your calculator? I won't simplify. Okay, so now I've got to plug in to make sure I don't get any negatives. So this one would be um, a little bit more difficult to plug in. I'm just going to tell you, if you plug in, it works. Both of them. So there you go. You get plus and minus. Because we don't need to waste our time on that. That's If you get an ugly one like that in the real test or homework, you have to do it that way. But just trust me, I plugged it in. Okay, so now I have multiple logarithms that are being added on the left, but they all have a base of 2. So remember, when we have logs with the same base being added, we can rewrite their arguments through multiplication. So that's log base 2 of x times x plus 2 equals log base 2 of 6x plus 1. Now I have log base 2's on both sides. So this is going to be new. If I have a log base 2 of both sides, then the arguments must be equal. So we can basically drop the logarithms, which means what's on the inside must be equal to each other. So x times x plus 2 equals 6x plus 1. Now you can only do this when there is a single logarithm on both sides. So you see how originally there were two logarithms on the left? You can't just drop them all then. You have to combine it as a single logarithm and then you can drop them. Okay, so now I'm going to distribute here. That gives me x squared plus 2x. Then I'm going to move all of this to the other side. So it's going to give me minus 6x minus 1 equals 0. Combine those. x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Multiplies to be 1, added or subtracted is negative 4. Does not exist. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So that's going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 20, which is 2 radical 5 over 2. 
So that simplifies to be 2 plus or minus square root of 5. Okay. Now then, I'm going to have to plug those in to make sure that both of those work. So I know the square root of 5 is a little bit more than 2 because the square root of 4 is exactly 2. So the square root of 5 is a little bit more than 2. So when I do 2 plus radical 5, I'm plugging in basically 4, a little bit more than 4 to all of these. So it would work there, it would work there, it would work there. Now when, so that means the plus works. Now if I do the 2 minus radical 5, well again, that's going to be a negative number. And you can find out exactly what it is by putting it in your calculator. Right, 2 minus radical 5, S to D, you get negative 0 point something. But I know it's a negative number. So if I plug that in here, it's not going to work because I would be taking a logarithm of a negative number. Therefore, the 2 minus radical 5 does not work as a solution. So the only valid solution there would be 2 plus radical 5. Okay, so on the right, I have two logarithms being added. So I want to rewrite that as multiplication. So it's going to be the natural log of x plus 3 times x minus 1. Now on the left side, I have a 2 that's out front. Well, I can't drop a logarithm with a number in front of it. So I'm going to have to move the 2 up top to be an exponent. So that's going to be the natural log of x squared. Now because I have an isolated logarithm and a single logarithm on both sides, I can drop that log that gives me x squared equals, and then I'm going to distribute over here, x squared minus x plus 3x minus 1. Now, if I get my x squareds on the same side, they cancel. Negative x plus 3x is 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then go ahead and solve. 2x equals 1, so x equals a half. Yep. I'm glad you are here. So it should be three halves. So again, plug those in. Three halves here is fine. Here is fine. And here is fine. So I plug in three halves. The argument stays positive everywhere. So that is my one valid solution. Okay, now this one, I have multiple logarithms on both sides. So I'm going to have to rewrite both sides as a single log. So on the left, they're being added, so I can rewrite them as multiplication of the arguments. So natural log of 3 times x minus 1 equals. Then on the right side, they're being subtracted, so I have to rewrite that as division. So that would be the natural log of x over 4. Remember, the number that's, or the logarithm that's being subtracted has to go in the denominator. So 4 is on bottom. Now I have a single logarithm with nothing in front of it on both sides. I can drop the logs. Distribute here. 3x minus 3 equals x over 4. And now I'll go ahead and solve. So I'm going to move that over here. I'm going to move the negative 3 to the right. So that's going to be 3x minus x over 4, which would be 11 fourths x equals 3. Does everybody with me how I did that? This is the same thing as 1x over 4, so it's a 1 fourth x. So 3 minus a fourth is 2 and 3 fourths, which is 11 fourths. And now x is being multiplied by 11 fourths, so you could divide by 11 fourths. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, though, because I don't have a calculator. Those cancel and give x. That's going to be 12 over 11. So that's a little bit more than 1. So as I'm plugging in, that works here. It works here. 
So that is my one valid solution, 12 over 11.